Okay, so we've already started on this project, and I figured I'd kind of start filming and then catch you all up on it. So I've got some pieces already cut out for a holster, and in particular this is another type of shoulder holster. And that's going to be what the main project is. But I wanted to talk about what the rest of it would be if I was making that. Now in this case the customer already has the shoulder straps and rig, so he just wants me to make a new holster for it for him to carry. So I'm not going to be making the straps, but this would fit on the type of shoulder holster I've always heard called a spider rig. And it's pretty much just straight straps. I don't even keep a pattern for it, I just keep this little piece. This would be in the center of the back between the shoulder blades. It has four straps that are riveted onto it. They go through a slot in here to keep them from pulling off the rivet. But it just goes through that slot and then rivets into place. The straps, there's two of them that are 24 inches long. They go up over the shoulder and double back on themselves and have a screw post to make them adjustable. And there's two of them that are 16 inches long that just go from the center of the back down to the holster underneath the arm. Um, and again, they double back and have a screw post to make them adjustable. There's a keeper loop, or there can be a keeper loop to keep the straps together. I might find a picture of an old one I made and splice it into this video somewhere. And you can see what I'm talking about. It's a very simple style of shoulder rig. So the holster made for it needs to have a part that goes up and folds over on itself and then there is a ring in here. It's either a D-ring or a square or a rectangular ring that goes in there that the two straps can... This one's going to go through and be riveted around the ring and then the one from the shoulder holster is going to go through and be held together with its uh, screw post. And that's how you actually attach it on. So the pieces I'm making here, I've got a piece to line the back of this one. And then the piece that's going to make the holster pocket, and again, a liner piece for that as well. Now this is the only really odd shaped piece in this particular project, and this is doing it a little differently than I normally would. You could make it just built into the holster where there's just two little, like you'd have on a knife sheath. Um, for the belt loop and it just rolled back and stitched on themselves and that's what the loop attaches to. In this case I'm going to make an entire separate piece that goes on the back of the holster and the whole holster pocket is going to fit together and then sew on to it. Um, yeah, in this case it'd be like this. Then these will be folded down Rings will be attached on there. This part all the way down here at the bottom will have a snap on it and that makes what attaches down to the belt to keep it from pulling up when you go to draw the firearm out of it. And that's why this odd shape of a piece here. You'll notice it's not really symmetrical. Uh, part of it is so that the holster fits on it and part of it is so that the holster gets shifted to the front a little bit so it's not way back underneath the arm. In this case, um, that's best for the customer. In some other cases, you may want it further back under the arm for somebody that's narrower. This is somebody that's got a little bit extra roundness about him, so he'll need the holster to be shifted forward a little bit to where he can reach it easily. And that's why these are shaped kind of the way they are. And the part that goes up the front is kind of pointed up more. So it comes straight up the front side of him, so it's actually the holster will be out. Like I said, kind of more, it'll be under his arm, but it'll still be out in front a little bit. Whereas this part will be down lower, it'll be going out towards the back more. So this part was made the kind of the same way I usually make patterns. I took a tracing. tracing. Like I said, this was for a revolver, so I traced around it when I met the customer at the gun shop, basically. And I rolled it over on its backside along its sights and I traced around it again and I came up with these two tracings that far apart that tells me basically how wide it needs to be how much I need to leave for it to fold around it and then I give it about three quarters of an inch or so outside of it and that's what I make my pattern out of now I don't need to add on any parts up here to be the belt loop or anything like that in this or to uh, cover the back of the holster so that it doesn't rub against the person because I've got this other piece that's going to be on this is just the pocket for the, the revolver and the bare minimum of a holster. Now, 
This could also actually be the bare minimum of a holster. All you have to do is add a belt loop onto the back of it, and you've got yourself a holster. It's really just a pocket to hold a gun. Now, of course, we get, before we get too far into this, I'm going to do some edge beveling and take a stitching groover and go around. Because I'm going to be lining this, I'm going to have to stitch all the way around the edges of it. So I'll be putting stitching groups in places that you wouldn't necessarily need to if you were not lining it. Um, if you were not lining it, pretty much all you'd have to do is where you're going to be stitching the holster together. Um, but again, like I said, I'm going to be lining these pieces, so I'll need to put stitching grooves in. Now, the edge beveling I'll probably wind up doing more of later. But I found that it kind of evens out some of the lumps and bumps right up on that upper edge from when you're cutting out. And then your stitching grooves wind up a little bit more consistently, you know, straight lines. They don't have that one little spot that pops out because they're uh, a little sliver that cut at a different angle or something while you were cutting. Now, I'm not doing any edge beveling on the back of these pieces because obviously I'm going to be gluing the lining on and I'll have to trim the liner and then edge bevel it probably after I stitch around these edges. Okay, now we're going to wet it down and mark it up and get ready to do some stamping on it. On this one, I'm just going to use the 503 dry weave type basket weave tool that I've used on a lot of holsters in the past. I think it's a 436 as a border tool. Um, if I get it to focus on those. And use a wing divider to mark a line. Alright, now real quick, a line to follow. Just kind of gently mark one in there. sheep wool scraps to dye this because it's fast at least compared to just using a dauber
and some resoline for the finish, also applied with cheap little scraps. Now then, before I can stitch this closed into a holster, I have to stitch it onto this piece. Before I do that, I want to go ahead and finish up these upper and lower edges. I won't finish this edge until after I've got it all stitched together and done. But I want to finish these up now so that they're not in the way whenever I get to that. And I'll go ahead and finish the edges on this piece while I'm at it because it should be pretty much, except for some rivets and snaps, and stitching this piece onto it, it should be pretty much done. Hopefully, I'll be able to attach this on here, stitch it up, and still be able to stitch this outer line with my machine. We'll find out, because it's going to be pretty tight. But I'll basically just be stitching 
a line down here and then kind of back up and make a triangle and that's what's going to hold it onto the back piece. So I managed to forget to turn the camera on while I was sewing this because I was paying too much attention to sewing it. But you can see on the back here, this shape is what I wound up sewing the holster to it with. And that's inside the holster. You can't see it from the front. And then I sewed the holster shut along this outer line. And I had enough clearance that I was able to do that with my machine without any trouble. And it all sits nice and tight on there. This is loose down here so I can get to this snap if I want to put a different snap in there or another one to make it more adjustable. However, I want to do that. Um, but what I still have to do on all of this is I have to grind these edges with the sander real quick. And then I can finish those up. And I need to set the snap down here and some rivets up here. And this will all be done. This will obviously still need some shaping, and I'll do that like I usually do when I go to meet the customer at a gun, a gun shop and range. And I'll just wrap his gun up in saran wrap, and that will protect it. I'll have the holster wet down, and I will wet shape it right there to his particular firearm. Because in this case, like a lot of times when I make holsters, there's been some modifications to the sights and so on on the firearm, so it doesn't fit standard stock holsters. So you can't just use a stock holster pattern for it. It all has to be custom. And that's why I do custom holsters and make my own patterns. Now snaps can be problematic if you don't have enough of the uh, post sticking out of the leather, especially on this cap side because the back of it will tend to collapse down into the cap and you lose some of that post. So I don't have very much of it sticking out here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually take a hole punch and I'm going to cut out part of my lining with it. Just punch through part of the way so I can get through the lining and then cut away that material. Uh, maybe with a French edge scab, or maybe just pull it out. Depends on how good I am at it at that particular day. But then we can remove enough material that this piece will set down into the leather a little bit. And that gives us that extra room that we need. Let's see. piece comes up and now we've got plenty of posts sticking out up through the center of the snap.
You can do the same thing when you've only got one layer of leather um, instead of two. It's a little trickier and you do have to cut away that material with something like a French head scaver then um, and basically carve it away. Anyway, that'll make the part that'll snap on the belt. This part up here will uh, attach to the actual shoulder holster part, the actual straps. And we should be just about good to go.